All right, welcome back. We are doing 7.4, ready, set, go, numbers 15 through 19. And these are really good, like, conceptual questions. And so the conceptual questions really help you understand, like, it gives you an understanding of how much you are, like, how your interaction with these ratios are. So it's okay if you don't understand everything. Um, whenever they ask you to explain something as why, those are always going to be good questions. Okay. So this first question, number 15 says, explain why it's impossible for cosine theta to be greater than one. Okay. So the first thing that I think about is I think about the graph of cosine theta. So these are a bunch of old graphs that I was working with. So I'm going to type in cosine theta. And if you look at the range, meaning how high and how low it can go, um, it's you it can't it's not bigger than one so let me just graph the line y equals to one just so that you can see so y equals to one so that's like the upper limit of your graph meaning it's not going to go higher than that so graphically that's why you can't be greater than one okay Let's talk about a couple other definitions and then see if you can gain a better understanding. Okay, so the other thing that I want you to think about is what's the definition of cosine? It's adjacent over a hypotenuse, right? In a right triangle, this is the, oops. This is the adjacent side and this is your hypotenuse side. What's one of the things that you know, no, 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 that um, since you've been knowing about right triangles, one of the things that you should know about right triangles, oh, this is not a right triangle, there. What it, what's one of the things that your teacher always said that you had, that had to happen in a right triangle? So maybe you're thinking, I don't know, what are you guys thinking? What has to be true? in a right triangle. Very good, number one, all the angles add up to 90 degrees. Well, the other tools that we always use with right triangles is trig and the Pythagorean theorem. In the Pythagorean theorem, who always gets to be by himself? When it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, who always, yeah, the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse, if you remember, maybe it was like your seventh grade or eighth grade teacher told you the hypotenuse is always the longest side. Your hypotenuse is always the longest side. So let's write that down. So this guy is always my longest side. Okay, he's always gonna be my longest side. So if your hypotenuse is the longest side, that means your adjacent side is shorter I know this is very obvious, but it, your adjacent side has to be shorter. Not shorter, sorry. Let's try that again. Let's spell better. Shorter than hypotenuse. Does that make sense? So that means that your adjacent side is less than your hypotenuse side. Okay, so when you divide numbers like this, adjacent, which is smaller, so this is your smaller number, when you take a smaller number and divide it by a bigger number, will that number ever be bigger than one? When you take a number and you divide it and you have fractions, right, will that number ever be bigger than one? if the smaller number is on top and the bottom number, your denominator is bigger? And the answer is no, okay? So the way you can say this is your adjacent side will never be larger than your hypotenuse. And in terms of fraction land, um, in order for a number to be greater than one, your numerator has to be larger than your denominator, right? We call that an improper fraction even though there's nothing improper about it. So um, your cosine has to be um, less than or equal to one 
because there's no way that your adjacent um, could be um, bigger than your hypotenuse. And Ms. Johnson, you said equal to one. When is your cosine equal to one? That's when um, I'm on my bars, right? Because technically my hypotenuse is the same as my radius, which is the same as, <clears throat> there's no right triangle there, right? So we're safe. So does that make sense for um, why cosine can't ever be greater than one? Okay. Then they say, name the angles of rotation when sine is equal to cosine. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph sine and cosine and see when they're equal. Okay, let's see, sine of x. So they're equal here, here, wait, not there, sorry, here and here. And then again here, but that's outside of your two, your first circle rotation. So it's pi over four and five pi over four. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Because if you think about your 45, 45, 90 triangle, right? You, so this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Your, um, your an isosceles triangle. And when we find the sine of this angle theta here, and the cosine, because you're in an isosceles triangle, those sides are congruent, right? So though that's equal. So that's that's why it makes sense why it would be pi over four. Now you're thinking, okay, well, why is it five pi over four? So if you if you graph where five pi over four is, that's here, right? Where my sides are negative one and negative one. So you still have that um, equal. And then, so some of you might be saying, Mrs. Johnson, why isn't it here in like the third quadrant or the fourth? Well, here your one is positive, but here your one is negative. So the sine and the cosine are no longer equal. Okay. The other way that I could prove this for number 16 is by looking at um, your, what's this guy called? your um, your unit circle. So when I'm asking you when sine and cosine are equal, I'm asking when y equals to x. So you're looking at all of your um, coordinates. So you're looking at this one and this one, and you're going through one by one and seeing who is equal, whose y and x are equal. And you're like, ooh, that's pi over four. It comes really close right here, right? But one's negative and one's positive, so no, that can't be, right? And then again over here with 5 pi over 4, okay? So if they said, let's see, let's read the question again. It says, name the angles of rotation. So our answers here are going to be pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. Now, that's in the first rotation. So if you remember here, you're, you have all of these that are equal in the second rotation and the third and the fourth. So just so that we get all of them, we can add um, plus 2 pi n. Because that's just me getting all of them. Oops, plus 2 pi n. Right. So that's me getting the first rotation, the second rotation, and all of these rotations, no matter where, oops, no matter where they are. Right. So even this one right here, that's, you know, 45 pi over four. So I've gotten all of them because I added so many rotations. Okay. And you'll get more kind of used to this two pi n business as we continue solving equations. This one says, for which trig function does a positive rotation and a negative rotation always have the same value? So for which trig function does a positive rotation and a negative rotation always have the same value? 
Okay, so wait, what are they talking about? So let's look at our graph. Ah, it's over here. Sorry. So they're asking when, I'm gonna go back home. When is the negative rotation and the positive rotation gonna be the same? So they're asking like this, they're asking when is f of x equal to f of negative x? Do you remember what we called this? This was called an even function. So this was, if you go right, if you go left, your y values will either travel together up or they'll travel together down. And so which function is that? So let's look at cosine and it is cosine, right? Cause if you look at the right side and if you look at, I don't know, it looks like a little bit past six and you look at the left side, which is negative six, a little bit past negative six, those values are at the maximum versus if you look at kind of like a little bit past three and negative three, those values are at a negative, a minimum, right? And so they're traveling together. That means that function is even. So this is cosine. Cosine of theta is even versus sine. Now look at sine. When I travel to the right so much and I travel to the left so much, your values for your y's go in opposite directions, right? So if you travel to the right, I don't know, what is this? Uh, a little bit before five, you go down to the negative side. And if you go a little bit before negative five, it's a positive. So they're traveling in this opposite direction. When this one goes up, this one goes down. Does that make sense? So that's not an even function. Tangent is also an odd function, so that's not it. They were just being fancy about how they asked you which function is even by using the definition. All right, number 18. It says, explain why you're in the unit circle tangent of theta equals to y over x. Explain why in the unit circle tangent of theta equals y over x. Okay, so remember when I told you guys the reason why I don't want you to depend on the unit circle so much? It's because it won't allow you to answer questions like this, okay? So the reason why um, tangent theta equals to y over x is a couple of things. So the first thing that I think of is tangent of theta equals to y over x, and I wanna draw a picture. So when I draw a picture in the unit circle, Okay, this is y, this is x, and this is one. Because it's a unit circle, it means that my hypotenuse will always be one. Now, if you look at the tangent of this angle theta here, it's literally opposite, which is y, over adjacent, which is x, right? Another way you can think about this is that tangent theta equals to sine theta over cosine theta. Again, in the unit circle, sine theta is equal to y and cosine is equal to x. So there's another reason, okay? Last one, explain why sine theta equals cosine 90 minus theta. So this has to do with like what you noticed a long time ago, whenever you're looking at um, a right triangle and you were first learning sine, cosine, and tangent, right? I'd have to write, and this is actually what I'm doing with my um, 10th graders right now. I always write it like this, theta's opposite angle, and I write opposite here, right? For theta's opposite, actually, you know what? I will, I'll write this as y. And this is x. So I always talk about theta's opposite. It goes that way. And I'm just going to write this as beta. Um, maybe I should use a different color. Give me a second. So this is beta. And this is how I would write opposite for beta. So I like to say that theta's opposite is beta's not opposite. In fact, theta's opposite is beta's adjacent. 
Okay, theta's opposite is beta's adjacent. So that means that when I write out, and I'll write it out here, sine of theta, so sine of theta here in this case is going to be y over, and then I'll put this as r, y over r. Okay. Now this says cosine of 90 minus theta. In this case, this is really just beta. Oops, let me use the same color. This is beta. How do I know that? Because theta plus beta equals to 90. Because in a right triangle, the two acute angles are complementary. This plus this equals 90. So 90 minus theta is referring to beta. So if this guy's 20, this guy's 70, 90 minus 20 is 70 right? So I want to write out cosine of beta now. So let's write out cosine of beta. And cosine of beta is ka, right? So that's y over r, which if you look, y over r equals y over r. So what does that imply? That implies that sine of theta equals cosine of beta. which implies, and remember, let's take this guy back in, which is equal to cosine of 90 minus theta. So therefore, sine of theta, oops, what does that say? Sine of theta equals to cosine of 90 minus theta. So when you're doing these things and you're like, what? What I want you to go back to is, well, what is what are they actually asking? What does this mean? What does sine mean? Oh, sine means opposite over hypotenuse. What does cosine mean? Cosine means adjacent over. I want you to ask yourself, okay, what do these things mean? Okay. Um, there is a famous saying, and I don't remember who said it, that your answer always lies within your problem. And I'll say that if you just look at all the words, they're going to tell you the answer. You're just, you just have to kind of look at it. And that includes problems that you're trying to solve that have nothing to do with math. Okay. So one more time, the big lesson here that you were supposed to get is, do I understand what sine means, what cosine means? Um, can I draw pictures of it? If you really understand these things, um, you'll have multiple ways of like representing them. So maybe you, maybe you like writing them as their definition. So you'll write tangent equals to sine theta over cosine theta. Maybe you like writing them um, using a picture. So I really like these pictures here, right? I really like these pictures here or these triangles here. So if you are um, are like, I'm a little confused on this, Ms. Johnson, try a different way. So if you're good at representing things algebraically, now try representing them using a diagram and you're going to increase your learning. All right. Thanks for listening.